Hi, welcome to Measure Marketer. My name is Prashant and in this video, we will learn about how to implement enhanced e-commerce tracking, not by using data layer, but by using a custom JavaScript variable. Lot of times what happens is when you work with developers, the developer's responsibility is to push the data associated to all those e-commerce actions into a data layer in the exact format that Google asked us to do. Google gave us a website called enhancedecommerce.appspot.com. If you go, it will give you the data layer syntax for people who want to implement enhanced e-commerce tracking the hard coded way. And for people who wanted to implement enhanced e-commerce tracking through Google Tag Manager, Google have a different data layer schema format that the developer needs to follow. But a lot of times when you don't have a developer support or developer is pushing some of the enhanced e-commerce tracking data, but some of the other data he missed in this video, the developer or the plugin that we are using to implement enhanced e-commerce tracking which pushes the data is missing out on pushing an impression event on all the category pages and i had to write a custom javascript code and use custom javascript variable feature of google tag manager to 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 retrieve and to scrape the data on all those category pages and push them into a javascript variable in the form of an array and each product is part of one object I will show you how I have exactly done this in this video. So I want to show you how I have done that. So if you see my screen, this is the Google Tag Manager code. This is the Tag Manager account. So I'm sending all the enhanced e-commerce tracking data in the form of GA event. So I have select created a lot of tags. So if you see um, my tags that I have created for him. You see, I'm sending something called as an impression. So I type impression. When you, when you look at my screen, there is one event which is being sent, the product impression, right? I'm sending all the data to analytics in the form of GA event. So I'm sending an event called category enhanced e-commerce product impression. But you see, when I'm sending the data to analytics, I'm sending there is data which is associated with e-commerce and I'm sending that data by putting all of that into the data layer. And that is why you have an option. You can simply select, hey, the data is available in data layer and Google you can go and read the data from data layer. And once Google receives the data, looks at the data and it is in the right format, Google will really process the data and give you all those amazing enhanced e-commerce reports that you find in Google Analytics interface, right? But what I saw was on all the category pages of this particular website, the data layer was not getting pushed for impression event. So I had to create one more impression event tag to send the data to Google Analytics. But this time the data is not sent using data layer. It is sent to analytics in the form of a custom JavaScript impression array. So I will show you what that array is. So this is the, this is the variable that I was sending. So if you click on I here, it will open that exact uh, variable. And this is the custom JavaScript code I have written. So I'm going to show you what I've done here. So you'll understand in real time. So I have this call code already there. So I click on preview. Once I click on preview, I go to this particular uh, you know, debug console where I try to open the website. And once I click on preview, the browser opens in a special mode where whatever I can do on the website, I can see all those actions being recorded in the debug view. So you see the page loaded completely, it's still loading page loaded. And you see at the top, so bottom right, you see something called tag assistant connected. And now that the tag assistant is connected, I will go to the, the preview window. You see, these are all the events that you can see in the summary section of Google Tag Manager preview mode. Now you see, I am on the home page. So when you scroll down, there are a lot of products. And whenever you see a lot of products or category of products, you need to push something called as an impression event. And this plugin, is doing a wonderful job of pushing all the data into data layer for that particular impression. You see, event, currency, impression. There's a special meaning for the event uh, uh, key in the data layer object is that this is the only value which can be used as a trigger if ever you want to send data to any third party platforms, marketing platforms or analytic platforms. Right, so that is why it's always recommended that whenever your data layer push, you always use an event key along with it. 
right? You see impression because there are so many products. It is an array and each product is an object. So there are multiple objects. Each product is representing an object and all of them are grouped under an array, right? Like that. So there are so many impressions that it is being pushed by the uh, plugin. But sadly, when I was trying to do that, I was happy. I was happy when I was doing that because simply I can go use this trigger condition and based on this trigger condition, I can say, see, that's the exact trigger condition. So I created a custom event here and I put that trigger condition and whenever this event is pushed into data layer, I'm sending an enhanced e-commerce tracking impression event to analytics. But, but here is the problem. When I go to any category page, so imagine if I go click on lighting and I go to disco lights, this is a category page. So practically when you go to a category page, the plugin that we are using for this WooCommerce should also push another impression event, right? All the products. But sadly, when I went to the, the preview section, I don't see any event being pushed. Not just that, when I go and look at data layer, when I go and look at it, there's no data. So that's when I went to other pages and I thought this problem persists with all the category pages. And obviously when people make their purchase journey until conversion, they definitely go to a category page and this is where they exactly click on the product and, and, and go through the entire purchase journey. So I thought maybe I will now go and create a custom JavaScript variable to push all the data in the data layer not not data layer but the custom javascript variable and i will use that exact custom javascript variable to send the data to analytics i have already implemented that so let me quickly go and show you that once you see this is the custom javascript variable that i have created and this is exactly in the same format that google expects us to create uh, the data layer uh, object for an impression action impression array and so many others how have i done that so what i've done is i created a custom javascript code so let me quickly go and show you that code so I go to variables here. So when I go to variables, you see, this is the variable that I've created. And I'm using something called DOM scraping. DOM scraping is generally not recommended whenever you want to scrape data because a lot of times when the classes or any other element attribute changes, the tracking can break. That is why it's always recommended that you work with your developer and ask your developer to push all this data into data layer. But in cases where nothing is available, then you'd have to employ data scraping, which is web scraping from the DOM. So I copy this code. So what I've done is for us to easily understand, I put the code here. So this is a function. So I've created a, a function, right? Custom JavaScript variable simply have to run a function. It has to return something. So I have a return here as well. So you see impression is an array. I simply declared one uh, variable called impression as an array. And I have used a DOM scraping. So let me quickly go and copy this. The video becomes too long if I practically go and you know do the DOM scraping because it might take an hour at least, or if not half, if not not an hour at least forty-five minutes. So you see here, what I'm trying to do is this is the title. This is right. So this will give me the the title. So if, what if I want to get the first one? I simply type this and I type in in a text. It will give me the it will give me the the name of the product of the first one. Similarly, if I go and copy the next one for product IDs, when I copy this, I simply go, if I would type it, it gives me an array and I want to get the first one. So I'm going to type that. And once I type that, I'm trying to get the property from data set. Why I'm writing data set is because whenever you want to read any value, uh, which is uh, an attribute of an element and that attribute key or name starts with data, you cannot simply go and read that. You can only read that by using the data set. So I type in data set here. And when I type in data set, you see it is another object. Inside the object, I want to read the product ID. This is the product ID. So you can go and see this is the product ID of the first one. So what if I want to scrape the price as well? So this is a pretty straight uh, CSS selector. Oh, this is having dollar symbol, but we should not be having dollar symbol. So I will write a regular expression, which will remove the dollar symbol and replace with empty. So you see, this is the price. So I have written a selector for all of them. So I have given a name as product names, product ideas, prices, but there are so many products here. So many products, so 20, 25 products. So because I wanted to create one object for each product, 
because I wanted to create one object for each product, I had to write something called as a loop. So I have written loop for i is equal to zero, i less than product names dot length. And here I'm creating different variables called product underscore name. And I'm writing product names, which is this of the first one. I is equal to zero, start with zero, which will give me the first items price or name. Similarly, first items ID, first products price, first products category. This is another variable that I've created, which will uh, read the value from the URL. The category of the product is the last one. So I wanted to write a JavaScript, another JavaScript to read this particular value. And that is exactly what I've put here. And product position is one, because whenever you are trying to loop in an array, it always starts with zero, the first position, but we don't want to put the position as zero. Practically, it is one. But when you're trying to read it, it starts with zero. So I wanted to always add plus one so that we exactly know the position, right? And then I've created one more variable, which is an object. Inside this way, the object, I'm trying to store all the values of that first product, the name, ID, price, category, position, list. So you see product name, product ID, which are nothing but these variables. And finally, I'm pushing all of those objects into an impression array. And this code will run for the number of times, which is the length of this prod names array, which is the number of products that are eventually displayed on the category page. And finally, once it is done, I'm trying to return. And once it is done, I'm trying to return an e-commerce object. Object, e-commerce object. Inside the e-commerce object, I wanted what? Uh, currency code and then impression and I'm assigning the value which is this impression and when I did that whenever people go to the category page you see people go to this category page and that is exactly what you see here and once people go to that particular category page I know this custom JavaScript variable is ready with that array right which is returned as part of that custom JavaScript variable which has all the product details right so what I have done is I am using the window loaded event trigger and on that event trigger or DOM ready or window loaded, whichever you think DOM ready is early in the page loading sequence. So if you want to send data as early as possible, right, you can, you can use DOM ready. So I'm using DOM ready and that DOM ready should trigger the impression event only on all category pages for that I've written a regular expression. So this regular expression, let me copy this regular expression as well. So uh, what I do is whenever I want to create a regular expression, I go to regex 101. In fact, I have a detailed regular expressions course for marketers and people who want to use regular expressions in Google Ads and, 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 and Data Studio and Analytics. So if you are somebody looking for learning regular expressions and master it, so I have my course to check it out. So this is the regular expression. So I'm going to put this regular expression and this is the page URL. So when I type this here, you'll find the page getting matched. Why I wrote this? Because I want this tag to only fire the impression event on all category pages and not all pages, only category pages. So that matches regular expressions. This So this trigger will only match or this trigger will resolve to true only when people go to a category page. And on that category page for DOM ready trigger, I am sending the data to analytics in the form of an impression event but this time the data is not put in data layer, but the custom JavaScript array, which is returning an object, which is particularly in the data schema that Google expects us to send when we send them through Google, uh, the data layer format. I hope this video has given you some knowledge on how you can use custom JavaScript variables in Google Tag Manager and how this wonderful feature of using custom JavaScript variables in Tag Manager to implement enhanced e-commerce tracking. If you love this content or if you love this video, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, share this video. We have posted amazing and premium content on YouTube. And uh, also do check out our website, Measure Marketer, where we put uh, content only related to measurement and tracking and uh, and also check our courses facebook pixel mastery course and our webinars on server side tagging and lot of other exciting content uh, related to data layers and landing pages and enhanced e-commerce tracking and 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 google data studio and bigquery as well and uh, thank you so much for watching this complete video i will see you in the next video with something more interesting thank you so much